What's up guys, how are we? So we're here for another live instalment and tonight we've got a really good one. It's actually one of the, uh, uh, probably one of the cooler topics which we can go over. And that is, do fat burners work? Now, a lot of people actually, literally, the whole fitness industry is obsessed with fat burners. I mean, everybody wants to get leaner and lose fat and gain muscle just by popping a pill. Uh, so I'm going to go over whether they do actually work or not. I'm going to cover all through that. Uh, guys, put up any questions you got in regards to what I'm saying, um, and I'll stop, pause, go over it, explain it with you. Um, but we're going to look at you know the three sides of fat burners. So you know the the stock standard uh, oxy shred type fat fat burners that you can buy in your local supplement shelf. Uh, there are the ones like. Uh, you know your um, subcut by ATP ATP Sciences, things like that, where you actually rub them onto your uh, onto your, on your midsection, and it's said to burn fat. Um, and then you've got you know obviously your illegal fat burners. So we'll cover a couple of those. And then the gut microbiome enhancers, which work as fat burners too, and they increase energy expenditure. Uh, so we're going to go over that, and then after that, I've got a fair few really good questions as well. Uh, who've been posting up in the in the JCF Shred community? I'll put a link uh, down below for you guys to to get amongst. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm going to be covering all of that. All right? So, well, fuck, we've got 25 people, 27 already on, which is epic. Thanks for turning out, guys. Uh, Listen to little old me prattle on about some boring stuff. Um, so, yeah, so we might, might get cracking straight on into it. So before we get started, guys, if you do have any questions, just put them up below, uh, and I will, I'll, I'll cover it all. Da, 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 da. Radio. Let me get into this. All right. So first things first. Fat burners. When everybody thinks of fat burners, they uh, they think about they think about things like oxy shred. Right? So all your uh, uh, oxy shred, which is like a, you know meant to be a fat, a fat burner, um, uh, or, or all these supplements, which supplement companies market as being, you know, the next biggest thing which gives you massive amounts of energy, massive amounts of mental focus, massive fat loss, and you turn, you turn there, uh, the, the, the supplement around the other end and you look at the ingredients list and there are things that you literally couldn't pronounce even if you took like 10 minutes to like solidly sound it out, syllable by syllable. Yeah, I've tried doing that and, and it doesn't work. Uh, there are all these, all these fat burners, you know, like your Garcinia, Camboga, um, what do you call it? Uh, DMHA, DMAA, caffeine, uh, or any any of this stuff. It doesn't work. None of it fucking works, literally whatsoever. But I tell you what, it does. It ruins your digestive system, right? And I know James, you always go on about the digestive system, but when you're ruining your digestive system, you are not enhancing fat loss. Okay? What these fat burners do is they make you feel like your heart's going to jump out, and when your heart feels like it's going to jump out, you start sweating, right? And when people see the sweat come off, people associate sweat with exercise and exercise and fat loss. So I think because I'm sweating, right, that means that I'm exercising really hard, which means therefore I'm losing fat uh, and I'm burning a whole heap of fat. But it doesn't work. All these guys are doing in, the, in these supplement companies is they're just doing, you know, a lot of dodgy marketing. That is literally all it is. They, I don't know how these blokes, and these guys and girls have scruples because none of these fat burners work. They're not proven to work. They're not shown to work. They were never shown to enhance any sort of fat burning beyond like a regular capability. Uh, I mean, some of these things, some of these uh, supplements have got like 400 milligrams of caffeine in it. And I'll tell you right, guys, I am beaming out of my mind on literally half an espresso. I can't take a full espresso. I do not know how people are taking 400 milligrams of caffeine. It is absolutely crazy. So anything that is packed full of stimulants is not going to help you whatsoever. Now there are always things which people, they, these companies are always coming out with the latest and greatest, uh, you know, uh, supplements which which are meant to be fat burners they're, they're finding all these new things they're extracting them for plants uh, I mean a recent one was Sinopharin that was meant to be the next big thing doesn't work doesn't do anything anything that works anything that actually works as a fat burner 
is illegal. Now, Peter has just asked about what about L-carnitine. Now, L-carnitine is a really cool one. If you are deficient in L-carnitine and you take L-carnitine, you will lose more fat because L-carnitine works as a fat transporter and pushes across into the mitochondria to be, to be burnt up as energy. However, if you are eating a good diet, which you should be, any of my clients will be, your need for L-carnitine is not for fat loss. Acetyl L-carnitine, which I prescribe in a lot of my programs, is actually good for the production of acetylcholine, and which makes your brain work better and can help your lifts. But other than that, it doesn't do anything. L-carnitine is not a fat burner if you have a good high protein diet. Right? It's just simply not a, a good fat burner whatsoever. So the next time that somebody tells you that that dodgy bloke at you know, the supplement store, I won't name any, but the dodgy bloke at the supplement store who says, oh yeah, this one's really good. You know, I worked it, I, I, I used it and it worked and you know, I lost like five kilos in two weeks. Tell them to fuck off because honestly, it's absolutely a load of crap. It doesn't work. They don't do anything for you and there's really no benefit whatsoever uh, to taking these bullshit <laughs> fat burning supplements which make you sweat overactivate your, 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 your sympathetic nervous system, make you stress as anything, give you awesome anxiety. Uh, I mean, that's great, isn't it? Stop you sleeping. There's no benefit to them whatsoever. The only thing that it does is, I think for some people, the placebo effect works pretty hard and the placebo effect can end up actually making you lose fat. But after this video, I've just ruined that for you. So yeah, don't honestly, don't waste your time with this crap. There is no sense in wasting your time with all this rubbish, um, you know, that your local local supplement store owner is pushing. Right? Instagram models and Facebook models are even worse. They always pop, push this shit. It's like, oh, go check this out. You know, they don't use it. That's not the real reason. The real reason why a lot of these people look like look the way they do all year round is what we're going to discuss next, and that's illegal fat burners. Now. Chris Graff has just asked, is clenbuterol really worth it? Now, uh, clenbuterol is an illegal fat burner. All right? It works as a stimulant. Now, with it, clenbuterol is a, is, is a really good example of why you shouldn't use you know, things like illegal fat burners because clenbuterol is really bad for your heart. It actually makes your heart enlarge. Okay, So it will actually... Uh, it will dramatically increase the amount of energy you burn. It will make you more anabolic. It will it will make you more anabolic. It will make you more catabolic to fat cells. So it breaks fat cells down and builds muscle cells. Uh, it makes you stronger. It will keep you feeling like you've got a whole heap of energy throughout the day because it pushes your adrenaline through the roof. But yeah, the downsides are number one, it does result in make, giving you a bigger heart. So you get, you get left ventricular hypertrophy if you take it for too, or too much for too long. Um, now the doses of this they haven't discovered, but tell you what, I'm not going to be the one to test out how much clen I can take before I die. I'll probably leave that for some other lab rat, and I'd probably recommend that you guys take the uh, the take the road that I do and leave it for somebody else to to worry about. Because to me, you know, losing a little bit of extra fat because I'm too lazy to do a little bit more cardio is not worth my heart. So no, I would not say that clenbuterol is worth it whatsoever, Graffy. I would not. Now the next one that's a really, really common, uh, a really common fat burner is is, thing, is like thyroid hormones. Okay, a lot of a lot of people pump thyroid hormones and they they take a whole heap because what the thyroid does is it actually ramps up your metabolic rate. It increases protein synthesis, so it's anabolic. So taking these thyroid hormones, if you do it, you know. At a, at a lower dose, you can actually increase muscle gain, you can increase fat loss, increase, increase insulin sensitivity, everything. You can do a whole heap with these things. Um, but the only problem is, is that when most people take them, they take shitloads of them. They take absolutely heaps. They're like more, 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 more. And you hear about all these girls, all these bikini competitors uh, in, in certain federations coming out of their shows and saying, oh... You know, I got metabolic damage now. It's like, no, it's not love. You just ruined your thyroid because you took a shitload of T3 and, and thyroid hormone, uh, amongst other things. So in regards to that, look, thyroid hormone doesn't have, according to the research, according to everything I've ever read, uh, it doesn't have that many side effects. However, you've just got to be really careful with taking it. I'd take it underneath the, the supervision of a doctor only if you really need it. In the end of the day, I'm going to come back to these, with these illegal things, I'm going to come back to the, the baseline thing that I always say, it's 
Uh, it's just diet smarter, train smarter, and just be better. Don't rely on exogenous aids or ergogenics or anything like that, performance enhancing drugs, to get you, you know, just a little bit further because you're too lazy, you know, to go out and do a bit more cardio or do, you know, just burn a little bit more energy. Fuck, when I say cardio, I don't even mean you have to get on the treadmill. Go out, play basketball, play footy, uh, you know, go outside, walk your dog, whatever. Just because you're too lazy to do that is not a really good reason to start taking drugs which can potentially have bad side effects, okay? Um, uh, now, Blake, Mil Blake Milford's just said it's uh, just eat pizza and it's time to hit the clan. Don't do what Blake's doing. I would not eat pizza and then hit the clan. Uh, not good at all. Now, Jaden's just said, should girls eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight while cutting as well, or do they not need to consume as much as guys? Look, it, everyone's going to have their sweet spot for protein intake. Um, it really varies. Look, I actually use protein intakes up to, uh, what would it be, two grams of protein per pound of body weight, or for those of you who aren't still stuck in the dark ages with imperial measurements, uh, four grams of protein per kilo of body weight. Um, yeah, so girl, girls should eat, yeah. So you, the minimum I see if that is being effective, or the minimum that studies show are effective before you start losing muscle, is at roughly one gram per kilo of body weight. Uh, in protein, okay? So if you weigh 70 kilos, then you have 70 grams of protein. What I see as most effective is really up around the three mark. That's where I see all my clients get really good results, where they start gaining, actually, they actually, when they start, when they start gaining a lot of muscle and then losing circumference around their waist, which we can take away, you know, pretty logically as a loss of fat. Um, so yeah, with girls, I'd say do it exact do exactly the same as guys. Girls and guys, we've got the same. Uh, you know, we, we're all still human. Uh, all the girls are weird. Um, you know, they are still human. They they do respond very similarly uh, to the same foods and whatnot as what guys do. The training's got to be slightly different, but with the protein intake, yeah, definitely at least one gram per pound or two grams per kilo of body weight. Um, radio. Uh, next thing, next question that I had here was, oh, gut microbiome enhancers. Okay, so this is one type of fat burner which I am really, really fond of because I know they work. Okay, when you optimize your gut microbiome, you can actually increase your energy expenditure. Right, so there are certain bacteria in there which burn more calories and certain ones which burn less. All right. And now if you use certain herbs and certain supplements and then use dieting techniques to optimize your gut microbiome, you can actually burn more energy and yes, these things will uh, act as fat burners. On top of it too, if you look after your digestive system, you will look a shitload leaner. The reason why you will look a shitload leaner is because if your gut is inflamed, then you end up stacking water on all around your midsection. You look chubby, it jiggles. Uh, you know, as we're taught by Arnie, if it jiggles, it's fat. Um, so what you need to do is you need to make sure that your digestive, number one, first and foremost, make sure your digestive system is functioning optimally. As always, I'll say this in every video, make sure your gut is number one, look after it, make it optimal. And number two, start delving into things like chromium piclinate and berberine. What these do is these massively, massively help improve uh, the partitioning of your, of your nutrients. So they help to preferentially push glucose into, into muscle. They preferentially, uh, they, they increase energy expenditure and they make sure that your microbiome is very healthy. A fantastic thing about berberine too is that if you've got any bad bugs sitting in your gut and they're not doing you any favors, by taking berberine, it actually inhibits them, stops them from being able to reproduce uh, and actually kills off a large amount of them. So it keeps your gut microbiome uh, in check. If you do have a dodgy gut and you know, you're, you're constantly bloated and things like that, besides fixing your stress and besides uh, you know, fixing your diet, using things like oregano oil uh, and peppermint oil can actually really help the stomach line, or sorry, the, the gut lining and also can help you know, get rid of all, any of those uh, nasty bacteria that you don't want. Now the other type of fat burner which is a new one which is coming out, are all these transdermal creams. So all these creams and stuff that you rub into your gut. Now, ATP Sciences have got one uh, called Subcut. A lot of people in Australia use this. Now, you know what? I'll actually vouch for Subcut because I froth it. 
I really, really enjoy Subcut. I think that it works well. Now, what Subcut is, is it's a series of uh, heap of ingredients. I've got some over there. I should probably, uh, should, I might grab it. Uh, it's got a couple of ingredients in there, um, which are actually anti-inflammatory, so it reduces the inflammation around the skin. Uh, and then they've also got some other cheeky fat burners, which I'm not sure if they work too well or not. But I'll tell you what, using it, when I use it, I get noticeably leaner, and I will use Subcut coming into every single show. All right? Uh, no, I'm not sponsored by them. They don't pay me to say this. I just genuinely actually believe in the product and I think they're doing really great things. So yeah, shout out to ATP Sciences. Um, but yeah, Subcut is actually a really good thing. Now at the same time, there are a heap of other uh, of these creams and things like this uh, by other brands which are not quite as reputable as you know ATP Sciences. Um, and what these guys do is they put in all these fat burning ingredients like Garcinia, Camboga and, and, and stuff like that, which don't really work at all. Um, and they put them into your, uh, they put them into these creams and people rub them in and they think that they're going to lose a whole heap of, whole heap of fat, but they really don't. A lot of it once again is placebo. So with those things, be really careful. It's up to individual opinion. Um, I'm not sure if there are any studies out on them. I haven't seen any. Uh, so the research is quite sparse in this area because it is a new area. Um, but yeah, I'd probably stick to what you know with those, with those transdermal creams and I wouldn't rely on them. In the end of the day, they're a one percenter. So they're going to do like that much. Your diet and your training are going to do, you know, that much. They're going to do the, the, the whole heap. Um, and, and yeah, so I would not rely on rubbing creams into your belly to lose your belly fat. Simply stop being a fatty, put the cookie down, stop eating that hamburger. Uh, and you know you will dramatically improve more by doing that rather than relying on a cream. Okay, so that's it for the fat burner side of things. Um, now Danny Moore's just asked, what are my recommended gut health products? That varies for everyone. As a standard for just for for just everyone, if you don't have severe gut issues, if you just stock standard, want to make sure that your gut health uh, is really good, you got good bowel motions, no bloating, distension, any crap like that. Number one is going to be betaine HCL because if you can look after your stomach uh, and you can make sure that your, um, uh, your, your HCL production is optimal, then you're going to digest your food well and your whole digestive tract is going to move well after that. Right? Number two is just a small amount of digestive enzymes if you're bulking. So guys, when you're eating a shitload of calories, I mean my guys are on like 7,000 calories uh, sometimes um, in the off season. That's a lot of food, like a whole heap of food. That's like literally, uh, yeah, kilos, kilos and kilos of food. Um, taking a small amount of digestive enzymes can actually just ease the digestive burden on that because it is a whole heap of food. If you're cutting, digestive enzymes are also uh, can be quite good because as you get more stressed, you can actually reduce um, the amount of digestive enzymes that you that are pushed out by the intestine because the intestine becomes you know less mobile as you as you get a bit more stressed. Okay, uh, so yeah, they're the two main ones. Third one, sometimes probiotics. Everyone's got to be really careful with probiotics now uh, because sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. And, and actually, more, rather than sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, some probiotics, some probiotic brands and some strains are better than others, okay? So I get my, or my everyone who trains with me to use one by Now Foods, which I found is absolutely fantastic. I'm quite sensitive to um, probiotics, so they can set my digestive system off. Uh, things like soil-based organisms, which are like a special fancy schmancy type of uh, type of probiotic can set me off, but the Now Foods one's really quite good, okay? Um, so they're probably the top three, brother. Uh, after then, the main thing you gotta look after is your neurotransmitters, because your neurotransmitters control your gut, all right? So your gut, makes your neurotransmitters and then your neurotransmitters in turn make your gut. If one of them are out, then the other's gonna be out. So you need to make sure that your neurotransmitters are well looked after, you need to make sure you're sleeping well, you need to make sure that you're doing all the basic things around that. Okay, supplements for skinny guys to gain weight. Just eat more. If you're skinny and you can't gain weight, you're really not trying hard enough. Everyone can gain, gain weight. Uh, recently one of my boys, Jared, uh, has been a hard gainer for his whole life, and we got him up to like it was over 7,000 calories in the end. And the boy grew, he grew an absolute heap. Okay, I myself, I was always a skinny kid, really, really scrawny, scrawny kid. I was constantly out doing stuff, couldn't eat enough food uh, ever. I was constantly chowing down, chowing down food. 
Uh, and the time when I started growing was when I was eating five and a half thousand plus calories per day. That's when I grew the most ever, okay? And I stayed lean too. So if you're skinny, don't worry about taking supplements. Supplements are not the be all and end all. There is no magic pill unless it's an anabolic steroid, okay? There is no magic pill. You just need to eat more. Even with the anabolic steroids, you still need to eat more too. So if you're a skinny bloke and you're just thinking you're gonna pop a couple of, couple of roids, uh, and you're just going to grow, well, yeah, you will a little bit to a certain extent, but you just need to eat more as well. If, you do, if you're not eating enough uh, and you are even taking those ergogenic aids, you're still not going to progress well. So the number one, it always comes back to having proper diet and proper training. If you are a skinnier bloke, try getting strong. If you're strong and if you're constantly progressing with your strength and you're eating enough, then you will grow. All right, it just always happens. So anyway, for a natty lifter, the number one rule is get your strength up, okay? Get your strength up, get your endurance up, and you'll grow, and you'll, you'll do fantastically. Um, now, my thoughts on Pepsi Max and other diet drinks. This is a tough one. See, I've prepped and I've drank a few of these things before, and it was the shittest prep of my life. It honestly, it, it didn't do me any favors whatsoever. I find that with a lot of these carbonated soft drinks, that they cause a lot of distension in the digestive system. And now when they cause a distension in the digestive system, you actually get an anterior pelvic tilt, and then one of your, uh, your lower back muscles, your QL, quadratus lumborum, actually hikes up to one side, and it can put your hips out of alignment in, in some people. Roughly, from what I've seen, roughly 85% of people get this. Um, but, you know, that's just, that's only from my, you know, non-controlled study. Um, but yeah, so with, with Pepsi Max, I wouldn't. If you're looking for optimal gains and, and trying to be like an absolute freak uh, and trying to get as lean as you can while growing muscle, growing strength, performing at your best, feeling your best, living longer, living better, living stronger, I wouldn't do it. However, at the same time, if you just want to get a bit leaner, if you just want to get a bit bigger, and you've got cravings while you are you know, following your plan, you can't get enough sugar in, um, you know, I sure go for it. Limit it to one a, one a day. But the general rule is, if your gut goes to shit when you're doing it, then cut it. You can't you can't really expect to get the best gains whatsoever uh, when you are you know having having a distress distress gut. On that too, you got to look at why you're getting uh, why you're getting cravings for sugar. When you have cravings, it's often because you're actually deficient in serotonin. If you're deficient in serotonin, then it shows that there's something uh, not quite right going on. So it could just be that you're dieting. Some people do just you know, get hit a lot harder and are a lot more deficient in serotonin when, when dieting. Uh, but otherwise, you've got to look at what you're supplementing with um, in terms of neurotransmitters, and you've got to look at your food intake. So if you're dramatically restricting your carbs, uh, you're sipping BCAAs and stuff like that all through the day, um, there are a couple of key things which actually cause your serotonin levels to drop, which make your craving levels spike. Um, so yeah, at the same time, you've also got to wonder, it's like, am I just being a fatty? Uh, and I, am I just being a little bit, you know, a little bit soft? Um, because dieting is tough. It's a stress on the body. It's designed to be that way because your body doesn't want to lose fat. It's not, you know, advantageous for it whatsoever to lose fat. So you've got to decide whether you're just going to, you know, push on through uh, and, and give the soft drink a miss, or if you're willing to potentially risk, you know, that 1% extra gain uh, in order to satisfy your sweet tooth. I've done both ways, and I'll tell you what, I'll never be drinking soft drinks during a prep again, and I don't drink soft drinks now whatsoever. Um, is tempo worthwhile? Okay, so training tempo, this is one thing we recently are, <coughs> excuse me, one thing we recently covered in the JCS Shred community. Uh, tempo is something that refers to the speed of an exercise. So it involves controlling portions of the exercise. So for example, on a bench press, right, if you have a tempo of 30XO, that means that you have three seconds down, a no second pause when it hits your, cha it hits your chest, and then you explode up, and then you've got no seconds pause at the top. Tempo regulates how quickly you do all parts of the movement, and it can change actually where you feel the strain. Uh, on a movement. So for example, if you uh, have a pause down the bottom of your chest, it's going to feel a lot different too if you have a pause at the top or even a pause midway. Okay, So tempo is really, really good. Now why tempo is good is because number one for motor skills, so you feel coordination uh, and how well you're performing an exercise. Number two, it can actually improve how good your contraction is. 
the better you contract a muscle, the better your gains are in that muscle. Okay, and this is going to lead me on to my next topic. Um, uh, and then number three on top of that is shown that if you control the eccentric portion of your of your contraction, you actually gain a lot more strength and you gain a lot more muscle. Okay, now on that point of saying uh, that if you can contract a muscle better, you will grow more. Anyone who says that they've got a stubborn body part and that they've got bad genetics in a certain body part, you don't. Sorry, that's not an excuse. It's just your training isn't good enough. You need to train better. Now, the ways in which you uh, need to train better is either number one, actually doing your program better. Like for you guys who, you know, have got calves. I've got shit calves. I've got the world's worst calves ever. I've got massive heel arches, high insertions. You know, I've got terrible calves. Uh, and a lot of you guys are out there with me. But a lot of people are saying, it's like, oh, it's my genetics. It's like, no, it's really not. It's just because you're not training them well, okay? Up until recently, I was training my calves terribly, okay? What you need to do is you need to periodize your training properly and make sure that you're actually hitting these stubborn muscle groups frequently, okay? Uh, or frequently enough in order to stimulate growth. And also that, on that, you need to be stimulating them uh, frequently enough so that your brain learns how to contract that muscle properly. And then on top of that too, you need to make sure that you're moving them in the correct way, okay? Nobody is born to have a small body part, okay? A lot of girls can't get big delts. The reason why is because their shoulders are so rolled forwards that their traps turn on, and whenever they do a lat raise, it's a trap raise like that. That's all they're doing. Whenever they're doing a, a, a press, it's the same thing. They're just doing that. When you are not contracting a muscle and you're not moving it optimally and you're not using the joint to its fullest potential, then you will not grow in that area. It's as simple as that. Just because you're doing a bench press does not mean you're going to grow your chest. I can testament to that. When I first started lifting, I had the world's worst bench press form. You know, five years later, I got sick delts. So thank you, young, stupid James, for bench pressing incorrectly and giving you very good delts. But, you know, I was lucky that it actually worked out for me there. Okay, most people it's not. Uh, so you've got to really make sure that you are moving correctly, that you are following the correct motor patterns, you are thinking about contracting the muscle and getting optimal tension through it because otherwise you will not be able to progress as quickly as what you, you, know, you should be able to. Okay. Uh, now, somebody else has asked about fat burners and is saying, uh, does fat burning whey help to burn fat? So there are a lot of these whey proteins out there which are said to be like fat burning whey's. And uh, if you heard where I, you know what I started off with, my opinions on um, you know fat burning supplements, yeah, nah, it's not going to work. Uh, it's not going to help you whatsoever. Um, you know, just because it says it's a fat burning way, there, there's no research behind these things. They don't do anything. As far as whey itself, whey, uh, no, nah, it's not going to be fat burning. Okay, there's no better way for fat burning or muscle gain or anything like that. In the end of the day, all it is is protein. It's a very easily digestible protein, okay, which can um, you know enhance muscle growth by just purely by giving you a bump in protein. Um, so yeah, there's there's nothing special about whey that's going to be an absolute game changer uh, at all. Um, so yeah, I, w I wouldn't worry about falling for the marketing of uh, you know of fat burning whey, okay. Supplement companies are absolutely fantastic at marketing. The reason why they have to be so good at marketing is because they can't patent any of their products. So you know all your pharmaceutical stuff. You know if you, you go down to the, to the pharmacy, you get some, you buy some antibiotics, which you shouldn't do. Never buy antibiotics, but you go buy some antibiotics, um, and that that antibiotic will have been patented by a pharmaceutical company for however long. They'll make a couple hundred million bucks off it, and then everybody else gets to go and you know, have a, dig, have a dig at making their own one of that. Supplement companies can't do that. Um, <coughs> so pretty much what they do is they just market it and they tell you that things are what they really aren't, okay? So don't fall for the marketing. Be smart. Research your supplements because in the end of the day, nothing's going to make you lose fat just by taking it unless it's illegal. And if it's illegal, you can't get it and you probably shouldn't be getting it either, okay? At the same time, Nothing is going to make you to grow grow muscle magically. Okay, you can't just take this bulking protein powder. Don't get me started on them. I'll do a rant on those another night because I fucking hate the mass gainers. It's stupid. Uh, but anyways, the mass gainer is not just going to make you grow if you just take it by yourself and your diet's crap and your training's crap. Okay, you cannot 
out diet, you cannot out train, you know, a good diet, good training, thing, a good training program. You, you, there's no shortcut around them. You just need to make sure that what you're doing is optimal, that it's tailored to you, uh, and that it's actually, you know, making, making it, it, it's working for your body. Okay. Um, now, Joseph Langford just asked, do I rate the fat burning creams to target particular areas? Uh, no, not for targeting particular areas. To be honest, I think most of the effect of a fat burning cream is actually in the reduction of inflammation and water from the area. Okay. Uh, now, Sam Scales just asked now about Animal Stack. Uh, Animal Stack is another really well marketed product, mate. So if you bought that, uh, look, probably wish that you would have watched this video earlier. Now, look, I'm sure Animal Stack's good. I remember back in the day I took it. Yeah, it seemed fine. Um, that was maybe five, six years ago now, but nothing special. Uh, Nick's just asked, what's my say on getting shredded and drinking alcohol? Uh, look, in the end of the day, if you take the calories in, calories out theory, um, yeah, as long as you account for the calories in the alcohol and you make sure you're in a calorie deficit throughout the day, then yeah, you will lose fat. But I can tell you right now, um, I've actually got a bloke over in the US who is prepping and he wants to drink because it's his last, uh, his, his last hurrah at college. I'm like, good on you, mate. I respect that. Um, and pretty much what, what we're doing with him in, so in order for him to continue losing you know, two pounds a week in, in body fat and staying full is we are... Uh, making sure that when he does drink, he's not consuming any carbs and fat. What I find is that people who drink and consume carbs and fat at the same time, uh, they don't, <coughs> excuse me, they don't lose fat and maintain muscle as often as what they would if they actually went on to just a protein and veggie only diet for that day. So when you do drink, negate the damage by just having protein and veggies, okay? And just keeping it to that, making sure that you hit your protein target. So really in my eyes, at least three grams per kilo of body weight uh, and, and yeah, you should be, you should be okay. With that being said, it's not optimal. I don't do it. Uh, I would never recommend, um, drinking if you're trying to get super, super lean or trying to get super big. But if you're just, you know, if you, if you're in your off season or you're just chilling, you just want to lose a little bit of fat then yeah, hundred percent, you can do that. Uh, a lot of my guys ask me to drink alcohol. If they can drink alcohol, I'm like, yeah, sure. Go for it. Have a gl big glass of red wine. Like make it count. Like, you know, those memes where they've got like, you know, this is a real tablespoon of peanut butter and it's mounted up. Yeah, I do that too. Uh, but yeah, I'm like, make it really count with the size of your glass of wine. And that's fine. That's okay. You just got to be sensible about it. If you drink shitloads, then yeah, you're not going to do too well at all. Um, if you drink every now and then, it's really not going to do terribly much to you whatsoever. In the end of the day, that comes back to the lifestyle side of things. Um, in that, are you going to be happier and are you going to follow your diet better if you can have a couple of beers a week, uh, you know, or, or a couple of glasses of red wine? Um, and if, if you are going to be that much happier and you're going to perform that much better and diet that much better, then yeah, it's a no brainer. Just on that though, try and keep it to smart alcohols. So don't go and have beers. There's a reason why you bloat from beer. Uh, and that's because beer is not very good for your gut whatsoever. There's a mob up in, um, I think it's Burley Heads called Big Head. Um, and they, they, they're up in Queensland. It's an Australian beer. And they make one which is like gluten-free, preservative-free, low-carb, the whole lot. And that one's actually a really good one. I've tried it before. Uh, and yeah, I felt fine on it. You know, it's just like drinking water. Well, not like drinking water, but it's okay. Um, so yeah, so that's my take on alcohol. Um, now, Scotty's asked me how important is water for fat loss and why? Uh, water's pretty important for life. So if you're not drinking water, Scotty, I'm a little bit worried about you. Um, so yeah, I'd probably add that one in, into the plan, although I'm pretty sure I've already told you to drink five, six liters of water a day, mate. But yeah, guys, water water's essential. Just drink more. Just just drink. The, the more water you can get into, the better. I recommend about 70 mils uh, per kilo of body weight. So if you're a, I think 70 mils. Yes, yeah, so that's right. I'll do my maths. Let me check that. Let me check. 70 times 100. Yes, good. I nailed it. 70 mils per kilo of body weight. I just had to work that one out. My brain's a little bit slow. Um, so that works out to about seven liters per day for somebody who's 100 kilos. If you are 50 kilos, you got to drink roughly to my calculations, three and a half liters per day. Okay, that's what I find to be best. The general rule is to uh, is to is to come back to you know just general one is 
as long as you urinate twice a day clearly, so it's like it's clear, I'd really say three times, um, as long as it's dead clear twice, then you're generally in the clear. Try to spread your water throughout the day. Um, now, Iron Mikey reckons Court RX and Alpha Prime are the best for dieting. Uh, why? Why would that be? Um, I don't see any supplements are the best for dieting. The best thing for dieting is dieting. Uh, Daniel Woods just asked, am I getting sick of people asking about steroids? Uh, and I'm like, no, nah, not really, man. I've been getting that since I was 16. So that's, uh, that's nothing new for me. Get this, guys. When I was 16, I was fucking scrawny. I was literally like 75 kilos. And I remember having a few kids come up to me like, oh, James, are you taking steroids? And I was like, Jesus Christ. And I've got it ever since then. So, so yeah, think what you like about me. I couldn't care less. Uh, now, Jared Robertson just asked me about green tea. Green tea, fantastic. Uh, really, really good. I would highly, highly recommend um, uh, getting amongst that. Uh, the problem with green tea, though, is that if you overconsume it, it actually has the opposite effect. So in a, in a low, lower amount of green tea or a more moderate amount of green tea, um, pretty much you will notice a slight increase in fat burning, like really fucking slight, really fucking slight. Uh, but it's also a really good antioxidant, and so that can assist with you know, weight loss and reduction of inflammation. But if you take too much of it, it actually can have a minor inhibitory effect on thyroid output. How significant that is, I don't know. Um, so yeah, I, I, just with green tea, actually just with anything, just be, go for it in moderation. Um, green tea, any teas are great. I smash it. Um, I've got some up there actually. It's called like Transcendence Tea. They bought it from the UK, UK mob. Um, and that's really quite good. It's good to chill you out. It's good for your brain. Uh, it contains, you know, things like, like the, um, theanine in it, to which, which chills you out, modulates your GABA levels. So yeah, it is good. Uh, I, Mark, he's asked about your himbean. No, don't do it. Your himbean's the pits. Would not bother. Uh, now, Daniel has just... Uh, hey, big fella. How are you? I haven't spoken to you in a while. Um, Daniel's just asked about... Uh, whey versus pea or rice protein. Um, look, what a lot of bodybuilders will say is that they'll try preps on whey and then they'll try pe preps on pea and rice protein. And they'll say every time, um, you know, they've... Sorry, I'll say that again. They've tried preps on, on animal proteins and then they've tried preps on, you know, just plant-only proteins. And they say every time that they hold them to more muscle, gain more muscle, lose more fat on the animal proteins. Um, as far as the amino acid profiles of the pea and the rice protein, they are inferior to the whey protein, but that actually won't matter terribly much as long as you have the rest of your diet is, uh, you, know, um, uh, you know, rich in aminos and you've got the full amino acid profile from that. Daniel, for you, if you're vegan and you're trying to take these, yeah, taking pea and rice protein is a shitload better than soy. Soy is the devil. Do not have soy. It is shit. Um... But yeah, if you're pea and rice protein are way, way better than taking soy. Um, now, Carl's asked, does alcohol affect protein synthesis? Yes, it does. It turns it off. Um, and then Maddie's just asked about alcohol sugars in protein bars. Uh, with alcohol sugars, um, so these are like generally poorly absorbed. Um, they're, they're sweeteners, okay? So they're things like your sucralose. I don't recommend these because they are super, super fermentable by the gut. If you have the slightest little gut issue, or if you've got the slightest amount of bacteria trapped in a place where it shouldn't be, too high up in your intestines, then yeah, your digestion goes to shit. Um, now, Molly's just asked about uh, green tea and or herbal tea. Go for it, whatever. Have as much tea as you like. Just don't go overboard with the green tea, okay? Herbal tea can't do anything. Um, all right, sweet. Uh, Fred's just asked, isn't whey an inflammatory? I don't know where you got that, bro. Um, it depends on the person. I mean, if you're immune to it, uh, sorry, immune. If you if you have an immune reaction, if you're allergic to it, then yeah, it's going to be inflammatory. But otherwise, it's you know not inflammatory whatsoever. The thing that's bad uh, is the sucralose in the whey. So that's that sugar alcohol that Maddie just asked about before. Um, that's that stuff's the devil. Honestly, I wouldn't wouldn't touch it. Don't recommend it. Um, there's only one time, there's only one protein ever I've been able to take sucralose and that's in that Sabido stuff. And even then I still, you know, don't pump a whole heap. I'll stick to just one shake a day. Um, so yeah, uh, now Louis just asked me about my opinion on squeezed lemon in, in warm water in the morning. Yeah, it's great. I don't know if there's any science behind that, but I believe in that hard because I know um, I've been doing it for years for starters and I definitely noticed the difference in my digestive system. 
uh, between when I, you know, have the lemon with the warm water in the morning, uh, when I don't. I think some some Chinese there's some Chinese rule about if you have you have warm water, it actually stimulates the liver, don't know, and it stimulates bile production, which lubricates the digestive tract. As for the lemon, I remember back in the day people were saying that it alkalizes, which is why it improves your digestion which is pretty wrong considering the stomach's acidic. Um, so I don't know why it works, but it works. So keep going with it, Louie, 100%. Uh, Daniel's just asked now about lactose-free milk. Is it gonna upset your gut? Yes, because it's got casein, bro. Um, you should have watched last night's. Uh, I, I covered that one. Casein is not good. So that's the reason why dairy really irritates people. So number one, you've got the lactose in it, which is the sugar, which is highly fermentable. And then number two uh, is the casein actually cause inflammation within your digestive tract. I've been a big offender of this. I used to take casein back in the day. I used to take cottage cheese, actually. I used to pump a shitload of it. And yeah, dude, like, it gave me the worst digestion whatsoever. This was, you know, back in the day, scrawny, 75 kilo, you know, quite stupid Jimbo. Um, so yeah, no, nah, I, I would not go for lactose-free milk at all. So go to almond milk or rice milk. Honestly, they taste great. Maddie's just asked me about apple cider vinegar, froth it. Keep going hard with it. Uh, thoughts on coconut milk for your gut? Coconut milk is like uh, a lot of the sugars. It's actually highly fermentable in your gut. So if you do have a slight gut issue, it can make it bad. However, most people seem to tolerate it quite well. If you have IBS or any IBS-like symptoms, cut it, get rid of it. It's as bad as onion and garlic. Uh, but if your gut's good, your digestion's good, your stress is low, happy days, you know, you'll be, you'll be sweet. Uh, Shane Gills asks, which protein powder is your favorite? Sabido, easy. Um, yeah, if you, if, you want their, if you want their details, just comment it and I'll give, them, give you the website. Um, and now Nick's asked, how low is too low in a calorie deficit diet? How long is a piece of string, uh, Nick? Um, yeah, good question. Pretty much, you want to eat as many calories as you possibly can while still losing fat. Okay, you really want to uh, you really want to make sure that you're maximising um, the amount of gastric stretching. Okay, so when your when your gut gets is nice and, and stretched because it's got a whole heap of food in there, it actually has a more favourable effect on your hormones um, and, can, and keeps them going. So the ones like insulin and, and your um, I think it's insulin leptin. I can't remember. I'll look at that. And I'll get back to you. Uh, but it actually has a favourable effect on your hormones. Um, so yes, yeah, so you want to eat as much as you possibly can. All these Muppets who preach calorie deficit, calorie deficit, calorie deficit. If you're not losing fat, just eat less. If you're not losing fat, just eat less. Doesn't always work. You've got to make sure that you eat, are eating as much as possible. That's why I recommend everyone, all my clients, eat a shitload of veggies uh, and, and try to go for the most, um, you know, or well, the least calorie dense foods uh, possible. So they've got the maximum amount that they can eat. Um, so yeah, Nick, that's a really good question, man. And... I don't know if I gave you a straight answer or not, um, but I gave it a good nudge anyway, because that is, yeah, that's an all-time question. Um, now, Moni's just asked uh, about, my. There's, there are good things about chromium and insulin, my thoughts. Um, yeah, so chromium does modulate insulin levels. How it modulates this is through the gut biome, okay? So the gut, chromium comes in, changes a few bacteria in your gut, and those gut bacteria then signal to, um, you know, to your pancreas to produce insulin, okay? And it improves this signaling there. So yes, chromium is fantastic, along with berberine. Is it possible for my metabolism to increase while in a calorie deficit, or will being in deficit just either keep it in the same or make it worse? No, it is not possible. In the end of the day, you've got to look at the science behind it. So you've got to take it back. So what is your metabolism, okay? Your metabolism is your thyroid output. Well, it's your protein synthesis and your thyroid output, okay? So it's like how much, how hard are you training, how much muscle are you breaking, how much uh, muscle do you need to regenerate? And then uh, at the same time, how much thyroid hormone are you producing? When you're in a calorie deficit, if you're still training like a bulse, then yeah, you're going to actually increase your metabolic rate, or, your, or increase your metabolism, because you're gonna be stressing the shit out of your muscles. <coughs> no, excuse me. Ah, um, yeah, so you're going to be stressing the shit out of your muscles, and it's going to be, you're going to be tearing down heaps of them, and it's going to have to be replacing. It's going to have to replace that. At the same time, if your androgen levels are still high, uh, yeah, you'll you'll still be somewhat anabolic. Um, if you uh, are looking purely at the, at the thyroid side of things and you're not training well, 
if you're in a calorie deficit, your thyroid output's going to decrease. Okay, what your thyroid does is it puts out enough uh, enough thyroid hormone to pretty much try and maintain your your weight within reason. If you're dieting, you're eating less. It gets told that it gets told that there's less ATP floating around, less free energy floating around, so it reduces its energy expenditure. All right. So in that instance, no, it is not possible to increase your metabolic or your metabolism while in a calorie deficit. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll run with that. There's a lot more complicated answer to that, but it's nine o'clock and I'm way too cooked for that. I'll be frank. Um, uh, is, Phil's just asked, fast and cardio in the mornings or hit, what do I think's best? Whatever, what do you like? I mean, I play basketball um, for all my cardio because I fucking hate the hamster wheel. Um, so I will, you'll not catch me on a treadmill, I'll tell you that much. Um, so yeah, do, do whatever you like, man. Really, it doesn't matter at all. Uh, in the end of the day, as long as you get it done. If you're competing, yeah, it's a slightly different question. Um, uh, but yeah, for, for in general, doesn't matter. My actually biggest thing, which I'll tell all my guys, is enjoy your cardio. Cardio isn't meant to be on a fucking treadmill. Treadmill's the worst thing ever. It's invented for people in fucking England who've got shit house weather and it's not worth going outside anyway. Um, you know, if you're out here in Australia or if you're, you're anywhere with a decent weather and you've got some sun, get outside, do something fun, walk your dog, play basketball, you know, go play footy, um, anything like that. Do cardio that you enjoy. That is the main thing out of this. Fasted, not fasted, I don't really care. You know, if, if just general, general, don't really care. If you're competing, yeah, I do care a little bit. But yeah, I would, um, uh, I would, uh, I would just do what you enjoy. Now, Shane's just asked, am I in the medical profession? Uh, my knowledge is unbelievable. Oh, thank you. That's just made my night. Um, yeah, no, look, I was actually studying to do medicine back in the day, and then I realized what a shit fight medicine is. It is 100% not what I wanted to do at all. So yeah, I did medical science, I did spend my time at uni, studied a lot there. Um, I had a really a heap of really awesome professors who looked after me, taught me literally everything about neurotransmitters, digestive health, um, and all that. So that's how I kind of specialized in that area, or specialized, learned a lot about that area. Um, and then yeah, sat the GAMSAT, went to get into medicine, and I was just like, you know what, fuck this. I'd rather make people shredded and jacked every day then uh, sit through the next seven years of my life learning a heap of crap that's wrong, prescribing SSRIs which do nothing, prescribing antacids which make people's guts worse, and doing a whole heap of the abhorrent things that occur in the medical industry. So I was like, nah. Um, so no, I'm not actually in the medical profession, but I was once going to be. Um, now, Stefano, hey brother, how are you? Um, uh, what is my take on the keto diet for building muscle and bulking up? Look, according to studies, actually keto is highly anabolic. According to... Uh, you know, the JCF experience, keto diet isn't great for bulking up whatsoever. Um, so I've tried keto diets. I'm a big fan for it for certain reasons, uh, but not muscle building is not one of them. Now, Harold's uh, just said, I'm having Sam E at the moment, Gabrin 5-HTP. Uh, will that help for anxiety? Uh, yeah, bro, look, you've got to get to the root cause of your anxiety. So those things are going to be a patch over. They're good for a couple of weeks, but you really need to start looking at why you're getting anxiety. Most common reason for anxiety, number one, stress. So deal with your stress. Find a way to get around that. Number two is fix your gut. All the neurotransmitters are made in your gut. If you have a neurotransmitter deficiency, all right, and you're not looking at the cause of it, you're just going to be keeping patching them up. So you can take all those things, the, the SAMe, the GABA, the 5-HTP, and yeah, it will alleviate it a little bit, but you need to have a more longer term plan. At the same time, GABA cannot penetrate the blood-brain barrier, all right? So your brain's really smart. It stops anything that shouldn't be going into the brain from going into the brain, all right? So taking the GABA won't do anything. It's a muscle relaxant, yeah? Only in certain people, in certain cases, gen yeah, generally, mate, for anxiety, I wouldn't do that. Certain people, certain cases, yes, but as, as general advice, I wouldn't. If you need a hand with it, inbox me. You know where to find me. Um, how much weight gain roughly would you recommend per week while bulking, while putting the least amount of fat on as possible? Um, it doesn't matter, man. Like, to be perfectly honest, look in the mirror. Uh, I just tell my guys, just when you get big, if you're going to put on, a, if you're bulking hard, you're going to put on, um, you know, a bit of fat. It just happens. What I see as, as optimal is um, for someone who's, you know, 
you know, decently trained, 400 grams of mass a month. So that's like 4.8 kilos a year of lean muscle mass. That's pretty possible. Uh, Scotty Larnach, as, as a few of you guys have um, seen him comment, comment here, he's put on a shitload of muscle over that. And he was roughly growing around 400 plus um, per month. And that's really quite good. So yeah, if you're going, going for 400 grams lean a month of lean mass, that's not including fat, then yeah, it's going to be happy days. Um, now, Khaled's just asked, Khaled, Khaled, I don't know how to, how to pronounce it, sorry bro, um, would I recommend heavy weight lifting for weight loss or high intense cardio, like 30 minutes on the treadmill? Don't go on the fucking treadmill, get outside, fuck the treadmill, it's shit, shit, don't do it, stupid, no, no, treadmill is not good whatsoever, unless you've got to binge watch some Game of Thrones or South Park. Um, so yeah, on that, on that note, cardio versus weights, weights 10 times out of 10, every single time. You need to get your weights in as a base. If you need to expend more energy after that, then you do your cardio, all right? Cardio is an ancillary to weights. It's an additive. It is not the basis of your training. It is not the basis of your fat loss. If you are having cardio as the basis of your fat loss and your training, you're doing it wrong. Stop it. No, all right? Make sure that you're lifting adequately because you need to you need to have the resistance training in your life. Number one, because cardio is shit mostly, uh, and number two, weights are awesome. All right. Uh, now, Famils asks, "What's my advice when I train hard and get a cramp in the leg?" Soldier on, mate. It's a badge of honor if you cramp in your leg. If you can cramp a muscle, you're a fucking legend. All right. You, everyone should be able to uh, flex a muscle so hard that it cramps. If it doesn't, you're not contracting it well enough. All right. So when you train hard and get a cramp in your leg, number one, you know, think of me and I'll be looking down at you. I'm like, yes, yes, well done. Um, but at the same time, if you're getting cramps, just generally, uh, then you're depleted in electrolytes. That's why I recommend everyone takes electrolytes into your workout, right? And also make sure that you're getting in a bit more magnesium and then probably on top of that, get in a little bit more water. If you're healthy, you won't be just cramping randomly. You will be, uh, you know, cramping from getting the fucking sickest contraction ever, all right, and making shitloads of gains. Uh, now, Fred's just asked, "What do I agree? Weight loss is difficult, regardless of training. If blood sugar levels are out of whack, yeah, man. If your blood sugars are fucked, then you're you're not going to be able to partition your nutrients um, well at all. You, you're what will happen if your blood sugars all are all over the place and your insulin's not working too well?" Um, then you'll become, well in general what seems to, to happen is you become more insulin sensitive in your fat cells and less so in your muscle cells. Uh, and that means that pretty much you preferentially store your, your glucose as fat, uh, which isn't fun. Uh, now Will's just asked, did I discuss drinking Coke Zero, etc.? Will, yes I did. We, we just said that, uh, that, that pretty much I don't do it, I wouldn't recommend it. But if you're in the off season and it keeps you from cheating on your diet or doing something silly and it makes you train harder, it's a reward, then yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, you know, in, in lead up to a comp, my current view, my views do change as well. I, I, will, I will say that. My views do change. But my current view, based on what I've experienced and the evidence, is that I just wouldn't if I'm coming into a comp, which you will be, big man. Um, can you get you on, chat, on stage? Uh, now, Chris has said, are there any reasons why the average person cannot have abs? Because the average person's a fat shit and lazy most of the time. The average person, not you, the average person. Uh, and now, obviously apart from gut issues and nutrition, but um, if that's on point. If your gut issues and nutrition are on point, uh, then you will have abs, 100%, 10 times out of 10. Any person that works with me and their gut issues, they don't have gut issues and they're sweet. Um, so yeah. Uh, now, Alex is just saying, lat pullovers seem to be fatiguing my triceps before the lats are cooked. What am I doing wrong? Uh, the high rep range. Mate, your high rep range, though, those ones are fucked. Yeah, I, I put large reps, like 30 odd, uh, in, in a lot of people's programs. Uh, number one, um, because I'm a bit sadistic and I actually, I actually laugh when I write your programs like that. It's, it gives me a good chuckle. Um, but yeah, mate, with a lap, with a lap pullovers, your triceps shouldn't be like, um, you know, completely, uh, 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 so they couldn't be, should be banned. They shouldn't be, shouldn't be taking all the strains. Just try and locking out your, your elbows a lot more. That's one of my favorites, dude. Like lap pullovers for reps. I love that. I do that so much. Um, and my, my own planning and, and everybody else's it just opens up the rib cage really, really well. And you should find that you're actually able to breathe a whole heap better and you move a lot better. So that's why I got that one in there. Uh, and the, uh, there'll be a few other of you guys who also who I'll, I also do that for. Um, now, Will says, vodka okay too during the off-season, right? I'm like, yeah, a little bit. 
Uh, and Lucas just asked, will glutamine help your immune system? And what's the difference between fermented and synthetic? Uh, in the end of the day, glutamine is glutamine. So there really is no difference between fermented and synthetic. I've seen one bloke say uh, that, oh yeah, synthetic glutamine is derived from bird feathers or some shit like that. I don't know. Honestly, I don't care where my glutamine comes from. As long as it gives me gains, gut health, and a better amount of gab in my brain, I couldn't give a shit. Um, it's going to be the same thing, you know, uh, regardless. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't worry too much. Um, so, yeah, guys, I'm going to call this the last one because I'm starting to fade hard. I need to go to bed. I'm like, yeah, it's 9.12. It's, it's late here for me. I'm up at like 5.30 every morning. Uh, but anyway, Chris, last question. Lucky last. Uh... Chris, he said that his training and nutrition are on point. Gut health and hormones, maybe not. Um, my top three subs for gut health. Already covered it, bro. Berberine, well, fuck, what were they? It was, um, for you, it'd be berberine, uh, number one. But for the general, general person, B10 HCL, digestive enzymes, uh, and then probiotics. All right? Lads, I'm going to call it that. I'm, I'm absolutely cooked, absolutely spent. That's way too much brainage for a simple man like me. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for, for turning out. It's really sick to have, you know, all you shredded ones on here. Um, when you do have questions which come up, you know where to find us. I'm going to be doing these things, like, all the time. We're going to be on around that 7.30, 8 p.m. mark, uh, Sydney time each night. So, yeah, just fire away, fire away. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, shoot, shoot me all the questions that you want, and pretty much I'll help you out as much as you can. Now, guys, as always, if you want to train with me, you know where to find me, all right? You can either comment below, shoot us a, a DM, my team will be with you, and you know, and we can get you more shredded and jacked uh, than what you ever thought was possible, all right? On that note, I'm out. Take it easy.